Testing one, two, three. Okay, testing. Test, test, okay. test. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. My mouth is filled with your praise all the day. O Lord, open my lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your holy name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning, To the music of the lute and to the harp, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by your works. How great are your works, O Lord! The stupid man cannot know, the fool cannot understand this. But you, O Lord, for behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All evil doers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil 
The righteous flourish like the palm tree. And they grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are full of sap and green. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my God, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 9, verse 30. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled. They stumbled at that stumbling stone As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorance of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. In the name of Jesus, three great judgments are found in the scriptures, a fourth yet to come, that of the flood, that of Sodom, and Gomorrah, and in the New Testament, the fall of Jerusalem. Noah built an ark, Lot prayed for the city, and an angelic visitation ensued, searching for ten righteous. With Jerusalem, the Lord himself visited and cried out, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wish to have gathered you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. Even as the Lord confirmed their hard-heartedness and visited his wrath upon them, he offered an escape to the remnant. How God labored to bestow on his people his promise and his mercy, but they would not. In Romans 9, two of Hosea's three children are mentioned, whose names mean not loved and not my people. Hosea is called upon to marry a prostitute, she who was not loved, now loved. And of course, God who chose Israel from an idolater such as Abraham out of a foreign land and made them his people. And his beloved people would not turn back. And so the Lord's love is removed. And consequently, those who are his people are no longer his people, and as such, the Assyrian Empire sweeps in, and 10 of the 12 tribes disappear from the history of Israel. Yet in this rapidly dwindling number of those who are intended to be the vessels of God's mercy, Paul quotes yet another almost contradictory prophet of of Isaiah. And Isaiah says, Though the number of children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant will be saved. They will be saved because the Lord will cut short those days and enter in righteousness. He goes on to say, had he not done this, even this remnant would have become like Sodom and Gomorrah. Now the text at hand. What then shall we say? So few are the Jews that are in the church 
yet many Gentiles. What a paradox. The Jews strove for righteousness, but it crushed them. Yet the Gentiles who did not seek his righteousness have it. Paul knows his prophet. He knows his people, the Jews too. He is, after all, a Jew trained by Gamaliel. He's a Pharisee to the Pharisees, and he excelled in the righteousness of the law. Not only did he pray, fast, tithe, earnestly study the scriptures, but he procured letters from the religious leaders to persecute followers of the way. Paul had captured the righteousness of the law. And in Damascus, this stumbling stone that we hear of falls upon him. He's crushed by a blinding vision, knocked off his horse. In a blinding light, the Lord Jesus asks Saul, why do you kick against the goads? The goad was an instrument similar to a cowboy that spurs on his horse something sharp to move the horse along. And for Paul to kick back, to kick against the goads, was like an ox to kick back against the sharp instrument that would only wound him further. Paul knew that the Lord had been working on him for years, yet he stubbornly held on to his own works. And in blindness for three days, Paul had to be led around like a child to ponder this question. Do you kick against the goads? Do you find yourself hurt again and again? What do you hang on to that is neither of the promise nor of God's mercy? Do you again and again kick under the Lord's chastisement when he is calling you to repentance and faith? Are you proud of your accomplishments? Is that what you want to rest on? Perhaps your education is that skill that no one can take away from you and you believe that you will always land on your feet. Maybe you're simply proud that you have no open sin in your life. What are the thoughts of your heart? Does your tongue always defend you and at the same time condemn others? Remember, the law always demands more. If you're proud of your accomplishments, have you done enough and have you done it well enough? If you're educated, are you as well educated as you ought to be? If there's no open sin, what of those dark thoughts of the mind and the heart that gives way to anger, jealousy, hatred for another? Remember, nothing less than perfection is sin, judgment, and condemnation. To err is human and is to die. Repent. Turn back. Despair of your small and black heart that refuses to be condemned, conformed into the likeness and the image of the Lord Jesus. Admit that Christ himself is the rock that you're hitting up against. Seek his promises and his mercy rather than your righteousness. Jesus is, in fact, the end of the law. In him alone, there is a life perfectly lived, perfectly kept, and he alone is the righteous one who lives by faith. He is the true son. He is all of Israel reduced to one. Any righteousness or good works need to attain to the stature of Jesus. He is the rock of offense. Who can meet this righteousness? Yet Jesus offers himself up as the one who, is, who was loved and is not loved. He becomes the perfect sacrifice. He's the beloved son who becomes the object of wrath, offering himself up to God on behalf of those who died in the flood, Sodom and Gomorrah, Jerusalem, the ten tribes, Paul, the Jews, the Gentiles, and that of the entire world. Jesus is crushed under this justice. He knows the measure of God's wrath against all unrighteousness, for it is poured out on him. He dies, the seed is sown into the ground, and then there is a great reversal at play here. The father sees the innocence of his son. The just shall live by faith. 
He is raised from the dead. He takes up again his life. Death has no hold of him. He crushes death with his death. The great rock of offense is Jesus. The offense is that all works of righteousness are ended with the death of Jesus. His death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sins and faith in him is our rock. Any attempt by Jew or Greek to reach heaven apart from him are found wanting, for he is the end of the law. He has won the victory. He has placed himself between the judge, the Jew, the Greek, and you. Though you were guilty, he has pushed you aside and taken your place upon the cross. The judge looks at you and sees only Jesus. You are declared righteous. His forgiveness is imputed to you. Do not look inside of yourselves. Despair of your heart, your emotions, your thoughts, and look to this rock, Jesus Christ. This righteousness is found outside of you. It comes to you through his gospel. Fix your eyes on him who is the promise and the fount of all mercy. He is your Lord. He is your God. He is the measure by which any other system of works is found wanting. That which Jesus won upon the cross is distributed to you. Your sins are forgiven. He would have you be the object of his mercy and his promise. He holds pastors before your eyes to announce to you by the stead and command of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the military, you're a GI, a government issue. You're issued a uniform. It's yours for the duration of your service. In baptism by water and the word, faith is given to you, and his clothes of righteousness are yours. The Father sees in you Jesus. Your sins are his. His innocence is yours. He declares you his beloved child. Any other condemning word that your heart might speak must be dashed against the, this rock, this Christ, who stands in your place and says, you are mine, I have paid for you. Any condemnatory word of another who would bring to you your sin for which you have been forgiven must be dashed against this Christ, the rock, and in his wounds you hide, for you are dressed in him. The reversal has taken place. Take up the cup and drink. Eat hungrily of his body. Make haste to receive the promises that he has given you. Make haste at the altar to give him your dirty rags so that he might again renew in you the inner person and stand firm upon this rock. He makes you Gentiles, who were not his people, his people. He makes you who were not a people loved, loved. He has deposited in you his seed of faith, so that you might have confidence and lift your eyes to the one who has redeemed you. The ten tribes were scattered and became Gentiles. The Lord, being steadfast in his love and mercy, yet again makes all of these his objects of mercy and promise should they repent and have faith found in him. Tribes that were dispersed amongst the Gentiles are those same Gentiles who come streaming into the church from all corners of the globe. Rejoice. There is a gospel to be shared. There are churches to be planted. There is mercy to be shown. You who have received and receive are given to be of his church. Praise God for Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our voices together in singing hymn 645, Built on the Rock.
With one voice, we confess using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord God, by the example of your blessed Son, grant us grace to accept patiently the sufferings of the present time in full assurance of the glory that shall be revealed to us. We specifically pray for Brittany, Dan, Katie, Leslie, Claire, Marcia and Patricia, Cheryl, Andrew, Suzanne, Mary, Shannon and Dale, Sharon, Bobby, jo Joanne, Sam, Laureen, Neil, Anna, Scott and Melissa, and Sharon. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create in beginning, its beginning, direct us in continuance and, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Please be seated for an announcement. Good morning. Um, wow. Just recollected a few moments before chapel started that it's been pre-COVID since we've been able to receive a check for LCMS from LW Mail. It was presented by President Patty Ross at that time in May of 2019. So. It is my delight to introduce Karen Morrison, the National VP of Gospel Outreach for LWML, and her husband, John, is accompanying her today. Um, and Pastor Shawan Trump. Welcome. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Um, the LW Mail, or Lutheran Women in Mission, as the official auxiliary of the LCMS, are pleased to support LCMS mission grants selected by our convention delegates. Mission grant number 27, Expanding God's Love in Uganda, LCMS Office of International Mission, Africa Region, in the amount of $92,000, is one of those grants this biennium. This grant will help establish a training center for women who wish to serve as deaconesses. 
The funds will purchase land next to the Lutheran Theological College of Uganda Seminary to build a small dormitory. It will help support 10 students with health care, health care, food, utilities, books, and transportation. Women who wish to serve their Lord can remain in their home country as they learn to care for their people and assist the pastors in the Lutheran Church of Uganda. Lutheran women from all 40 districts across the country continue to pray for this gospel outreach mission work. It is my pleasure to present the check to you in support of this mission. I can't wait to spend more time with you. I have other paperwork that I'll give you. So I just want to invite everybody, if anyone is interested, to introduce themselves to Karen. We're going to be in room 360 for about the next hour or so till a little bit before lunch. So please stop by and say hi if your time allows. Thank you. Um. 